Hi everyone, my name is Kim Harlan and I will be presenting the Reggio Emilia experience to you. Um, after my portion, there will also be another presentation by Katie Tillman. We are working together to present this material. A little bit of background in history. Uh, Reggio Emilia is a city in Italy right outside of Milan. There are about 140,000 residents. The city is known for its commitment to quality care and education for children from birth to age six. Um, the history of how the Reggio Emilia movement got started um, had to do with after World War II, um, there were these fledgling grassroots organization, organizations of preschools that were initially launched by socialists who were resisting fascism. They were dissatisfied with Catholic control of preschool education and so they started this organization where they basically wanted to start um, a, a high quality child care education for preschoolers that would encourage values like um, peace and working together, collaboration, inquiry, and things like that. In 1958, Loris Malaguzzi um, became the director and he worked on behalf of the Reggio Emilia schools for the rest of his life. He passed away in 1994. In 1963, the city government assumed responsibility of running the schools and they opened others and the movement started to expand. The Reggio Emilia schools are built up on a social constructivist framework. Children and adults construct their knowledge through interactions with people and the environment. Uh, this movement was, the Reggio Emilia movement, was inspired by John Dewey, John Piaget, Lev Vygotsky, and Jerome Bruner. The influence of John Dewey is visible in classrooms and early educators of Reggio, Reggio Emilia were avid followers of John Dewey. This is a quote by John Dewey, and because he was kind of, he wasn't the founder of the movement, but because this was uh, based on his philosophy, um, I included some information about him. Uh, but he wrote uh, an article called The Need for a Philosophy of Education in 1934, and this is a quote from it. Basically, um, it says, an environment in which some are limited will always in, react, in reaction create conditions that prevent the full development, even of those who fancy they enjoy complete freedom for unhindered growth. So what he's saying is that um, if we don't include everyone and create an ideal environment for all students, it hurts everyone. So this is obviously a strong support for inclusive education. Um, this, a lot of um, what you know, this philosophy is about is about mutual enrichment and to increase the depth and fullness of humanity, not just acquiring more knowledge or skills, but actually understanding humanity better and um, creating things that will improve humanity. The philosophy, um, another quote from another author, Valentine, is that unlike other pedagogies that can be guilty of treating early infancy as a preparation for later childhood and, and adulthood, and consequently, consequently seeing nursery education as a kind of antechamber to later stages of formal education, the Reggio approach considers early infancy to be a distinct developmental phase in which children demonstrate an extraordinary curiosity about the world. Reggio Emilia is not a model, and instead it is a culture and a right. Um, they believe that everybody has a right to this kind of education. The child is viewed as a confident, capable person, and school is not a place of transmission of knowledge. It is an environment that allows the child to be a producer of culture and knowledge. So they have a very different view. They have a view that the child is actually a knowledge maker, not the teacher. Um, I think in typical um, conventional 
preschools, the teacher is the knowledge maker and the child is the listener. But the Reggio Emilia approach differs um, in that way. Schools and children create culture together and relationships are vital in a Reggio Emilia environment. Teachers do not know everything and are constant researchers. Um, the Reggio Emilia philosophy is one of the few philosophies I think that um, allows the teacher to say, I don't know the answer, but I'll look it up. A lot of teachers have this um, almost like an arrogance where they feel like they know everything and they teach you know, to the student, teach at the student. In, in Reggio Emilia, the teacher is learning right alongside with the student and the teacher recognizes that they don't know everything and that they can learn from teaching as well. So here's another quote. This is by John Dewey. The teacher is not in the school to impose certain ideas or to form certain habits, but is there as a member of a community to select the influences which shall affect the child and to assist him in properly responding to these influences. Um, in Reggio Emilia, practice drives theory rather than the opposite. I think a lot of other child care approaches have a theory and then they set up their actions based on that theory. But Reggio Emilia is exactly the opposite. They will practice and the theory will evolve over time uh, by the knowledge that is gained through the practice. It is a deeply held belief, um, there is a deeply held belief in the positive image of the child. Each child has the desire to connect with others, engage in learning, and interact with their environment. Um, preschool education is a right, not a privilege. All children have potential, and children architect their own learning. Uh, what I really love about Reggio Emilia is exactly this kind of view. Uh, the view that they really are not, um, they don't really break everything down into um, lower functioning or higher functioning kids, special ed kids, normal kids, and gifted kids. Um, it's more of the belief that all children are important, all children have potential, um, learning should be individualized in some respect, but that we all learn collaboratively as well, and that we can all contribute valuable aspects to education. Um, as far as the evaluation procedures go or assessments, um, the Reggio Emilia approach mirrors Dewey's philosophy. Dewey was not opposed to testing or evaluation, but he was weary of the way that testing or evaluation is generally done in schools. John Dewey wrote Democracy in Education in 1916, and this is a quote um, kind of about how he views that. How one person's abilities compare in quantity with those of another is none of the teacher's business. It is irrelevant to his work. What is required is that every individual shall have opportunities to employ his own powers and activities that have meaning. Mind, individual method, originality, these are convertible terms, signify the quality, quality of pur purposive or directed action. If we act upon this conviction, we shall secure more originality, even by the conventional standard, than now develops. Imposing an alleged uniform general method upon everybody breeds mediocrity in all but the very exceptional. Um, in the U.S. Um, versus Reggio Emilia in Italy, <laughs> Italy, <laughs> Policymakers in the United States um, asked, they, there was an article that talked about this where they asked for new studies of Reggio Emilia schools that would measure lasting child related outcomes and evaluate programs, program quality based on external criteria. Um, the problem with that is that child outcome research is not done in Reggio Emilia. They have never done studies to measure the F efficacy of the program. Um, they don't really work that way. Um, this is a statement from Amelia Gambetti, and she is the executive coordinator um, of the municipality of Reggio Emilia, and she's a former teacher in Reggio Emilia schools. 
Uh, but she stated that their preschoolers often perform better in schools than others, but school isn't everything. And that's kind of the attitude, you know, that's um, prevalent in Reggio Emilia. Um, not everything should be about rote memorization and learning facts, and um, it should be more about learning throughout life and creating a community of lifelong learners. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, Amelia Gambetti po pointed out that in the last four years in Reggio Emilia, a child has never been retained. And she said um, the reason for that is that there is absolutely no need because we don't teach to children's weaknesses. We teach to children's strengths. Um, 30 years of success for about half of the children in a city of approximately 130,000 speaks for itself in, in her views. Um, in Italian, the word assessment means, quote, to give value. Um, does assessment interfere or enrich? I think that's an excellent question to ask, and I think that's one that should guide our assessment procedures. Um, outcomes can be related to factories which have input and output. Um, I don't think that we should be considering outcomes with as much gravity as we currently do. Um, we should focus on process folios, not portfolios, because how we learn is much more important than what we learn. Um, Reggio Emilia uh, philosophy is also opposed to longitudinal studies because the goal is a community of learners, not a product. Um, and this is all kind of dealing with that Emilia Gambino. Um, and she, you know, she feels there's no need to sell education because we, there are second and third generation successful graduates. People are very happy with the Reggio Emilia approach in Italy, so they don't feel that they need to measure it or sell it. Um, an alternative approach to reform uses standards and assessments as a means of giving feedback to educators and as tools for organizing student and teacher learning rather than, that, than as a sledgehammer to beat schools into change. Um, this is a quote that I really loved that I found in my uh, research. So um, in bringing Reggio Emilia to the United States, um, we have to ask ourselves the question, how can American educators recognize and use what Reggio Emilia has accomplished in their 50 years of development? Uh, Reggio Emilia Reggio Emilia educators cannot teach us how to do, adapt, or interpret. Uh, Reggio Emilia is an experience. You can't simply transplant it to the United States. Um, it must be reinterpreted and reinvented in the context of American culture. Obviously, Italian culture is different from American culture. So what we need to do is figure out the aspects of Reggio Emilia and how to use those learning philosophies and principles to create um, an American Reggio Emilia philosophy, in a sense, um, one that's going to be conducive to um, making the best learning environment that we can for our American children. Each child is unique, um, and this kind of goes along with the culture that you're implementing the Reggio Emilia approach within. Um, educators must pay attention to the unique experience of a child. Experience can only be understood within the context of each child. So every child's experiences are different. Every child has different strengths, um, different interests, like the combination of all of those qualities makes each child unique. So each child's learning experience is going to be different from the next child's. And part of that is the culture that they live in, which is why we can't just simply copy off of the Italian Reggio Emilia um, schools in their entirety. It has to be, um, you know, the American. We have to we have to figure out what qualities we need to implement in America to make it an American approach. Reggio Emilia impacts education in the U.S. Um, and this is a quote that kind of explains that or, or kind of affirms that. But through a strong commitment and cooperation of educators, parents, and the community, 
Reggio Emilia's exemplary program has made a significant impact on early childhood education in the United States. And so there are a lot of programs out there that have figured out how to make it work in the United States. Um, but it's not something, you know, that we can just kind of transplant here and copy directly. Um, my position is that I do agree with the Reggio Emilia philosophy. I am enrolling my two preschoolers in the CDC, which is a laboratory school operating under the Reggio Emilia philosophy. Um, I can't really find any downsides to this philosophy as I agree with all aspects. Um, I just think of it as the ideal preschool environment. Um, I, think that, I think that my children will be very happy and very excited for them to start there so that I can see, you know, how much they appreciate it and um, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. So that's actually why I chose to do this theorist um, was because I wanted to find out more about the philosophy of the um, CDC since I was enrolling my children there. Um, there are a couple of videos I'd like for you to view. The first is called The Hundred Languages of Children, and it's very interesting um, after you view the video, I think that you'll get a better understanding of um, how, much, how much children speak in different languages like art, music, uh, math, science. Children just, you know, they all communicate differently, and so we have to um, use multimodal means of education, of, of communication, communicating to these children. And so that is um, a video that kind of talks about that a little bit. And then there was also a CNN, CNN report on Reggio Emilia. Um, this is from March of this year, and I found it interesting that uh, the reporter, and I don't remember his name, <laughs> but the reporter was commenting on how... Um, you know, this is like basically the the high end preschool education in Italy, and how much we should you know be trying to implement that here in America, and what do we need to do? You know, how how can we get people interested in this? And I feel you know just really happy that my kids are going to be able to go to a school that utilizes this approach. Um, so I'm really excited about that. I have some discussion questions. Um, do you agree or disagree with the John Dewey slash Reggio Emilia philosophy towards assessment and testing? Why or why not? Um, and do you feel that the Reggio Emilia experience could be an ideal environment for children? If not, what criticisms do you have of the Reggio Emilia experience? The reason that I ask this question is that um, in the extensive research that I did for this approach, I really could not find any criticisms. And maybe I didn't look hard enough, but <laughs> or maybe I'm biased. So I'm interested to see what, what you think and if anyone can find any criticisms of this approach. And then the last question is, will you incorporate aspects of the Reggio Emilia philosophy into your teaching? If so, which aspects will you include and how? Uh, these are my references. And uh, for the next part, Katie Tillman is going to give a presentation on the CDC in the lab school and kind of how it is implemented a real world application of the Reggio Emilia approach. So uh, make sure to watch her presentation and the videos and to do the discussion questions. Thank you for listening. I really enjoyed researching this topic.